What's going on everybody, T-Mode here with another ultra wide review and today we're going to be taking a look at Marvel's Avengers. Before we kick things off, I do just want to remind you guys to please drop a like on the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful, it helps me out, helps the video out, and of course I do always appreciate it and without further ado, let's dive right into the ultra wide support. And the ultra wide support here is a little bit interesting, now I, I whenever I say that it normally means that it's not perfect, so it's not perfect, there's ultra wide support in game, good, we always love that and I think that's kind of like the bare minimum that we can look for, however it's weird in that there's actually a lot of 21.9 cutscenes and now there are like the in-game ones which you kind of expect sometimes you know most companies now are kind of tuned into that one so the in-game ones do stay in 21.9 so that's nice but there are also rendered cutscenes in 21.9 there are also rendered cutscenes that are in 69 and there was even one towards the end of the game where it was actually a, a rendered cutscene that like probably 99.9% like sure it was a rendered cutscene it was a rendered cutscene in 21.9 and then like the later half of that cutscene turned into 16.9 so I'm not really sure what like the the, the reasoning behind any of it was it didn't seem to really make sense whatsoever uh, the cutscenes looked fantastic and ultra wide and the ones that didn't you know were fine they had the black bars on the sides as normal and you know it's fine the game itself is is fine and ultra wide it's definitely not something that's like a you know like a Forza Horizon 5 which was last reviewed on the channel you know it, it's not like needed to make the gameplay experience significantly better and kind of like you need to play it this way to, to really experience it in depth but uh, it, it's nice it's nice to look at the game in ultra wide it's a really good looking game and that will bring me on into the graphics and when it comes to the graphics i want to say that avengers is kind of like a rung or two below guardians of the galaxy it's a really really beautiful game but it kind of just misses on a few different aspects the character models look good but there are certain aspects and moments where they just don't look great at all the environments look good but when you get up close to them sometimes they don't look good at all either one specific example that I could personally think of is like at the beginning of the game, uh, obviously Bruce Banner is in this, he plays the Hulk during the, the game, uh, his beard is like see-through, but like you can see that it's supposed to be there and he's supposed to have this kind of like gruff look, but it's just like, it's a see-through beard. And it's weird because it feels like that's almost like a, a, an actual choice because Tony Stark's beard is, is full and it's there, you can see it, so it's, it's very strange. But overall, that's really all there is to say about it. The enemies are pretty generic looking, everything looks good enough. Again, I, I kind of, put, again, put it on with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, it looks really really good it's about a couple rungs below that though it's still really good looking which kind of surprised me i honestly was expecting a little bit less from this game in particular but it, it really did surprise me uh with how good it looked outside of that in terms of the art direction there isn't really much to speak of it's it's pretty lackluster in terms of all the environments and in terms of all the colors it, there's really nothing spectacular or special about it it's kind of very bog standard um it, it look look again like i said it looks good it's just there's nothing special about it here you're not going to be looking at anything and saying like, hey wow that's special special looking or hey wow that's a cool color palette you know again I'm going to keep referencing Guardians of the Galaxy because this is the predecessor to that game not necessarily uh, relating to one another but they're both the Squ Square Enix titles excuse me uh, that are in the Marvel Universe and they, they did come out pretty much you know the Avengers of 2020 and Guardians of the Galaxy being this year in 2021. But Guardians of the Galaxy did have that kind of visual style to it. It had its own unique look. It had those beautiful colors and this beautiful kind of look to it. Whereas Marvel's Avengers just kind of feels like meh. It, it just feels super bland in comparison, especially. So from there, let's talk about the story. And the story is a little bit interesting. You start off playing as Kamala or Miss Marvel. And it spirals into this whole thing where you do end up playing as all the Avengers. So I'm not really sure where the story's focal point is. It does seem to kind of uh, focus itself on Kamala, which is kind of cool it's kind of nice it's an interesting character to, to focus on rather than the entirety of the Avengers but you do end up just playing as all the Avengers so I'm not sure why the focus was there uh, the story goes however that on a day at the beginning of the game a big tragedy happens bad guys try and take over the world or do something we don't know uh, causing superheroes to become vilified and people not liking them but also this event caused more superheroes to exist and with that a government kind of funded program called aim is looking to round up all of these superheroes or really inhumans as they're called they're not really superheroes most of them don't actually become superheroes but they just get powers so, but, but kind of semantics but whatever and overall with this story honestly it's it's just like such a bog standard basic marvel story it's like the only way to describe it like it's a fine story it's good it does enough uh, well uh, I, I'll, I'll take that back a little it doesn't do enough in, in my opinion there could be more to the story but the game kind of focuses itself around this kind of like destiny 2 style multiplayer where you're kind of like grinding out um items and levels with your characters i'll go back into that into the gameplay um uh, but but overall the story like it like 
like if you can just imagine the most basic Marvel movie, this is it. it that's exactly it. And I feel like that was kind of very similar with Guardians of the Galaxy. It's very similar to just like, oh, this is a big blockbuster uh, Marvel movie. However, I do think that Guardians of the Galaxy kind of nailed it in terms of just like being a really, really fun romp in this universe. Whereas Marvel's Avengers was like the lackluster movies in the Marvel series, if that makes any sense. I'm sure if you've seen all the Marvel movies, you know that some of them come out and they're just like, ah, that was fine. Like you, you're like, okay with it. But you're like, that wasn't as good as like the first Iron Man or like that wasn't as good as Endgame. I don't know which ones people have as favorites for Marvels, but like I like there are tiers to the Marvel movies, as we all know. And there's like tiers to these games too. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, awesome top tier Marvel movie. Marvel's Avengers is like a eh, bottom tier Marvel movie. It's it's still fine. It's still good. It's got enough of an interesting storyline to keep you kind of intrigued and involved. Uh, but there's nothing surprising. There's nothing where you're kind of going to be like turning around and being like, well, my perspective has changed or anything. Like it's just like super standard Marvel stuff. It's it's again bottom rung when it comes to Marvel stuff. So. You know, nothing here that, that I think is going to really draw anyone super into it, which I think is actually kind of a big thing as we move on into the gameplay. And with that being said, the gameplay here is is a mixture of fine and just not great. So like I said, it's kind of in the style of a Destiny 2 multiplayer thing where you can kind of go on missions and you can either go alone or bring friends or I, I think you can open up to like random people. I'm assuming you can. I never tried to do that because I don't like playing with random people. They tend to ruin the online experience. But if you press someone who likes that, you can do that here. Um, it's fine. Again, the combat itself is fine it feels like guardians of the galaxy but worse so like that's that's kind of your baseline if you went out on my recommendation to get guardians of the galaxy and played that uh this system is worse it's still kind of the third person fighting you still have your, like your dodge your attacks different moves and, and abilities for all the characters and it's just it's so bland and so boring and so repetitive it's really nothing special and honestly it's a little bit clunky i never felt myself like super in control of these characters and it left me leaving a lot to be desired like i want to feel like i'm controlling the hulk i I want to feel like I'm controlling Iron Man. I want to feel like I'm controlling Thor or Ms. Marvel. But no, you feel just kind of like you're controlling random generic character with generic power, but they all do kind of basically the same thing. So there you go. It's super basic, super generic, and, and kind of disappointing in that regard. And when it comes down to like the level grindy Destiny 2 style gameplay, that's not my style of game. If it's yours, maybe you'll like this, but I don't think so. Like You don't get anything that changes the character's looks. Like You don't get new outfits or new things like that. You don't get new abilities. Like You just get items that level up your character and you just keep fighting with this really boring and really repetitive gameplay. So like I could not imagine beating a story and continuing to play the game and kind of grind out the end game. In fact, I did not do that and I don't have any like intention or want or strong desire to go back and play this game i have no strong desire to get in back into the game whatsoever even if there was like hey we got this whole new storyline it's kind of like eh. like i don't really feel the need to go back there sorry another big issue with the gameplay especially when it's not really the part of the combat but there are moments where you can fly as iron man and thor and it feels disgustingly terrible like it is some of the worst flying in video game of experience not necessarily based on the controls the yeah, excuse me the controls aren't great but that's not even the worst of it the worst of it is like you feel like you're going two miles an hour like people sprinting on the ground like if you're running as black widow you run faster i think than these people flying and you're supposed to be again flying as iron man and thor they're fast generally so it's it's very weird it's very crappy feeling the flying it's just, it feels like garbage honestly it feels terrible like and i get why they did it they did it for the constraints within the game and like where the map is and where you are whatever i get that it just still feels terrible it's awful it's it's as bad as as like humanly possible like it's honestly it is honestly as awful as they could have made the flying. It feels terrible. So moving on from there, we will dive into the sound. And overall, the sound really, it really is an excellent, you know, just marker on it. Uh, the music is fine. It's really great. It's got the kind of super cinematic, awesome, orchestral, whatever you want to call it, music. Works it really well. Uh, the voice acting, honestly fantastic. You know, there's really nothing here that I, I've listened to and, and thought like, wow, these voice actors. Like, no, they all did a really great job. Every voice actor really, really did a, a really fantastic job to sell their characters and make them very believable. In fact, you know, it's it's very hard when it's like this because you do have voice actors competing with real-life actors and uh, the movie's kind of simultaneously going on. Like, 
the Avengers series is not far removed. It's not done. There's still more movies coming out and these actors all in their spaces. And none of these voices felt out of place. None of them felt like they competed heavily with those actors and made you feel like, ah, that doesn't feel like the movie or something like that. Like, they really did a great job picking out the voice actors and it really did work well. Uh, And overall, just like the in-game sounds, they're fine. There's, again, it's always like nothing special with most of these games. Um, All the sounds just sounded okay. Hitting enemies sounded fine. Maybe a little bit soft from my liking. You know, if I'm hitting someone as the Hulk, I want there to like feel like there's an impact. I want to feel an impact. And you just don't kind of feel it at times. I think they tried, but it left feeling a little bit soft. But overall, the sound here is good. It's not a a down point of the game, that's for sure. Uh, It's not a super big highlight outside of the voice acting, which I think, again, in the context of they're kind of competing with actual movie actors that are simultaneously playing the same characters, it it felt really good, honestly. So I, I give them props for that. Also, side note, now that I'm thinking about it, you know, this is what happens when you don't do a script. Uh, I do want to mention that as far as the story goes, it was a little bit short for my liking. I do wish there was more story. Uh, It felt a little bit long at times, but I think that's mostly just because the gameplay dragged it out. But as far as the actual depth of the story goes, I would have loved to see more of the story. It definitely left me wanting more. Like, they just didn't feel like there was enough, and I think it was hindered a little bit in terms of how long it felt by the the really not-so-great gameplay. So overall, what does that all mean for Marvel's Avengers? Well, in in my opinion, it's honestly, it's something that doesn't live up to the hype, and I think the initial release of the game was kind of an, a, a really big indicator of that. It did not hit any of the marks. It was very, very different from Guardians of the Galaxy, which I think hit every mark that it was looking to do. Um, so it, it's it's not that great for me. I think the mediocre gameplay, the short-ish story, while decent enough, doesn't make anything special happen. and doesn't really, it's not something that is, I think needs to be experienced. You know what I mean? There's, there's stories out there in terms of games, like, Deathloop, for example, which I I reviewed recently as well, was like one of those games where you kind of like almost need to experience it because it is just so unique and interesting. There's not anything like that here. There isn't a game that I would say, and it's not a story that's, you know, needing to be played. So what does that mean? Well, I like to rate things, whether it's a buy, wait wait for it to go on sale, or do not ever go near it. And in my opinion, this is kind of like bordering on the wait for sale or don't ever go near it. Now, this game is also on Game Pass. So if you have Game Pass and you're interested in the game, uh, I think it's worth a download and a a play. I don't think that, that, you know, if you're, if you got Game Pass and you have like, oh, I don't know what to play next. And you're like, maybe Avengers. I, I think it's kind of worth it. I think you'll, you'll, you know, for, you know, again, being on Game Pass, you're not really spending any extra money, so I'm not going to say it's free because it's not free, but it's part of your subscription to Game Pass. It's worth it. It's worth trying it out, seeing if you like it. I think, you know, you'll probably experience the story and maybe be done with it if you really like Marvel's, uh, Marvel characters. I should say I was going to say Marvel's, but if, if you like Marvel, you'll probably enjoy the story enough to want to wanna download and play it. Uh, if you don't have Game Pass, I don't think, even if you're a Marvel fan, this may be worth a few, especially not at full price. It's $60, absolutely not. Scratch it. It's not. Don't even go near it. It's not worth it at all. Unless you like have a bunch of friends that you're going to play with and you plan on dumping hundreds of hours into it, I really don't think it's worth the full price. On sale, sure. Again, if you're a Marvel fan, sure. I think if at that point you want it on sale, it looks interesting to you, I think it's worth the investment at that point. You know, you'll maybe get you know 15 hours out of it. Maybe you'll go a little bit deeper than I did. You'll play a lot more than I did. Uh, so I think at that point it's worth it. Now, if you're not a Marvel fan and everything I've said to you kind of like concerns you a little bit, then I would stay away from this game at pretty much at all costs. I don't think this is for you if you don't have friends to play it with uh, if you're not a big Marvel fan if you're kind of worried about the gameplay being repetitive boring and not great along with just a kind of mediocre story and weird mission structure yeah this isn't going to be for you and and I would uh, I would advise you to stay away from it 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 sucks Um, however I did kind of go in reverse Square Enix did release Guardians of the Galaxy after Avengers I did uh, Guardians of the Galaxy then Avengers so I'm kind of coming from a little bit of a saltier perspective where like I saw what Square Enix can do they crushed it with Guardians of the Galaxy that game was awesome. Like I said, and I still stand by this, Guardians of the Galaxy, for me, is like game of the year right now. It's my personal game of the year as of right now. And and I, I stand by that. As far as Marvel goes, it's, it's not even like on my radar for any kind of like consideration of anything and it's kind of like a weird jump to see so kind of going from something so great to something mediocre by the same company doesn't feel good especially when it's all the same universe and like all that stuff it's like you know it's, it's weird it's just weird for me so that's my recommendation if you're a big marvel fan uh, and you have game pass 
get it play it on game pass you'll probably enjoy it enough uh if you're a big marvel fan and you don't have game pass you don't plan on getting game pass probably wait for its sale and you, and you should feel okay with it if you're not a marvel fan and th like i said the things that i said kind of worry you and you're not a huge fan avoid it it's not worth it i don't think you'll you'll really have a great time with it and that's it that's my recommendation and with that recommendation, that is also the end of the video. So I do want to thank you all for watching this long. I do appreciate it. I love. Uh, thank you for all the love and support. It really means a lot to me. I, you know, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Uh, obviously, drop a comment if you played Avengers, if you like it, if you hate it. Give me your opinion on it. I would love to hear that. And also, don't forget to drop any games that you'd like me to try out and review on the channel. Uh, with all that being said, guys, I have nothing else to say. So I just want to thank you all one last time. And of course, as always, I will see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.